Welcome back, Jacko here with another video from the Oxygen Advantage, looking to change the way you breathe to improve the way you move, feel and perform. And in today's video, we're answering one of the big questions. Nasal breathing is all right and that's all good and everything, but what about at maximal intensity? So the question we're gonna answer in this video is can we nasal breathe at maximum intensity? So firstly, rather than answering the question like yes or no, we'll go into the detail of it. But just to say for most people, when you start uh, nasal breathing and you've switched from uh, mouth breathing to nasal breathing when typically when you're running or any type of exercise, um, then uh, you find it more difficult to start with because your nose is just not adapted to uh, nasal breathing, even though it should be. It's the most natural way that we should be breathing. The nose is designed to breathe. There's 30 different design functions of the nose that shows and prove it's designed for breathing. The problem is if you've not been using it for its job, it gets all clogged up and all those good benefits from nasal breathing that we get, you'll just start to become maladapted to those. So you become less efficient at utilizing oxygen, you become more sensitive to carbon dioxide, all the things that are driving poor breathing and poor performance from your breathing. And what we're going to look at today is can we work at higher intensities and even maximum intensity, um, even still nasal breathing? Because when you first start out, I couldn't even get to the end of my road without just snot coming out of my nose and just feeling all bunged up. I just couldn't keep up uh, with the intensity I wanted to run it, which was literally just even a jog at the start. So at the start, depending on where your starting point is, it can be more difficult. Typically, we say for people when they switch from mouth breathing to, to nasal breathing when they're running, six to 12 weeks for those adaptations to take place. So it takes time. It's not just gonna happen all of a sudden overnight, but the more you do it and the more you use your nose, the, the better it's going to improve. And uh, I have done a video uh, before this talking about three things that you need to do to help improve your breathing when you're not running to actually then help your nasal breathing when you are running. So make sure you do check out that video. I'll put that up here somewhere uh, and the link in the description below as well. Um, oh, and if you've not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe somewhere. Um, uh, because it's really important that not just nasal breathing whilst you're running, to improve your nasal breathing when you're running, you actually need to think about your nasal breathing when you're sleeping, your day to day, and then there's some breath holding work. And so check out the video for that. So typically six to 12 weeks we're talking about for some of those adaptations to take place. It can be quicker for some people, it can be longer for others. Okay, but it's gonna take a bit of time. And for the vast majority of people, we get up to 85 to 90% of our previous like maximal intensity. So when we talk about maximum intensity, we're talking like our VO2 max, the amount, total amount of oxygen that you can utilize within one minute at your maximum intensity. So uh, for most people, it's normal to be able to get up to 85, 90%. When you first start, you're thinking, I can't even run at 50%. So most people able to get to 85, 90%. But what we wanna look at today is challenging your mindset and your thoughts through some research that George Dallum has done, a research paper in 2018, that shows you can nasal breathe at your VO2 max, and some of the uh, results from it are astounding. So George Dallum is a, a professor of sports science and a Olympic triathlon coach. And he was observing his, um, his athletes and, and seeing a difference between those that were nasal breathing and mouth breathing. And he, he, he wanted to test out, what if I make them all just nasal breathe? What's gonna be, what's gonna be the difference in their, things like their respiration rate, how hard they're having to breathe? And can they do that at that maximum intensity at their VO2 max? So what he did is took five male and five female um, runners and had them nasal breathing, get this, over all their training for six months. So not just a few weeks, six months. Like it does take a bit of time, um, but the benefits are there. And this is about like, I've been doing it now for like three years and went up Snowden the other day and back down and felt like an absolute doddle, uh, but it didn't feel like that at the start. And this isn't about just N is one me, what have I managed to do? This is about research being done by people and, and some, some stats to actually be able to give you. And you can check, I'll put in the link in the description to the actual paper so that people wanna check that out that they can do. So after six months of nasal breathing when they're training, um, they, did their, they did their VO2 max with mouth breathing and then they did their VO2 max with nasal breathing. And some of these results are gonna be a little bit sort of crazy and prove why um, nasal breathing is so much more effective. And this isn't just at low level, this is at that maximum intensity. So one of the first things that they measured was their respiration rate. So how fast were they breathing? How many breaths per minute were they taking? And when they were mouth breathing, they were taking 49 breaths per minute. Um, and then when on average, and then when they, uh, when they were nasal breathing at VO2 max, 
the same intensity, that same maximum intensity, it dropped by 10. So they've dropped down to 39, um, which is my maths is something, it's something like it's 20 odd percent uh, to drop from 49 to 39 best minutes. So taking 10 less breaths every minute. So the respiratory system having an easier time of it, not having to work as hard at that same maximum intensity. They also measured their ventilation, so the total volume of air that they were breathing, and that was reduced by 22% on average. So a, a, a decrease in the number of breaths per minute they're taking, a decrease in the total amount of air they were having to use at the same maximum intensity. So it's starting to make us think, well, that is a more efficient way of breathing, and clearly they're getting, um, they're getting more oxygen in by breathing less and breathing less often. That's saving us energy that can go to other areas of the body like your legs when you're running or whatever exercise it is that you're doing. And they actually proved this efficiency by measuring um, how much oxygen and carbon dioxide was expelled in their, in their ex exhalations. So uh, measuring what uh, components are and percentages of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the, bre in the breath that we expel or exhale out, get breath out, I can't get my words out, um, that, that we breathe out is telling us about what's going on on the inside. So there was less oxygen on their exhales when they were uh, nose breathing compared to mouth breathing, meaning more oxygen was being uptaken by the body. So they were being more efficient and proven by that. And, and also those reduces in uh, ventilation and respiratory rates. And then their carbon dioxide levels were higher, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide was higher in the exhalations when they were nose breathing compared to mouth breathing. And don't get confused by that. Higher, meaning better, they were able to tolerate higher levels of carbon dioxide, which links in with the Bohr effect, which is the idea, or the, the well, this is not an idea, it's a, um, a principle where um, Christian Bohr in 1904, dates way back, showed that, or, or proved that the um, carbon dioxide in the blood allows the pH to drop slightly, which reduces uh, hemoglobin's affinity or attachment that it has to oxygen, allowing for more efficient transfer of oxygen from the red blood cells in your blood into the tissues where they're needed. And clearly this was happening. They had elevated levels of carbon dioxide and it was being seen in their exhalations and they were, they were utilizing more oxygen into the tissues more efficiently, hence why there was less oxygen in their exhalations, hence why they were able to breathe less and be able to, in terms of the number of breaths they took and the total volume of air that they were breathing as well, all, uh, all reduced, showing and proving um, that nasal breathing can be done at their VO2 max uh, and showing that nasal breathing is more efficient. Uh, hopefully that answers some of those questions and myths in our head of like whether we think it's possible or not, but it does take some time. And some of the things um, that to think about with this is when that breathing is more efficient, less energy is needed to do those breaths because you're taking less of them and you're being more efficient with the amount of air that you're taking in, more oxygen going into the cells quicker and more efficiently, less time for to fatigue for you, increasing uh, your work rate or the, the amount of work that you're gonna be able to do, um, increasing things like recovery afterwards as well. It just goes to show us that yes, the, and, and, the, and how it happened, the principles of elevating levels of carbon dioxide being better for and increasing our tolerance to carbon dioxide being better for um, more efficient transfer of oxygen into the system, that the nose is a better way of getting oxygen into the system rather than mouth breathing. So that study was a great one that proves those principles um, and puts it in real practice with real, uh, real people actually doing real athletic uh, events like running. And so whether you are running or doing other ex whatever exercises that you do, start to change your mindset first, that nasal breathing, it's not just for that low level stuff. It might be to start with for you now, but if you carry on working and improving on your nasal breathing, and it might take up to six months, it might be less, it might be a bit more, but you're gonna get the benefits of those if you stick with it. And so this is the encouragement for that. Um, and there's a number of things that we can do in terms of like the, the breathing, when we're, how we're breathing when we're sleeping, by taping the mouth, for example, breath holding as part of the oxygen advantage, altitude training effect, where we get better uh, adapted to those high levels of carbon dioxide and, in, and improving the oxygen carrying capacity of our blood by the hypoxic effect, which is just the fancy word for low oxygen. So there's a ton of stuff that we can do around our nasal breathing when we're running to help improve our nasal breathing whilst we're exercising. And one of the biggest takeaway messages is you can, and even if you can't get up to like 100%, like you can get 
on average people 85 to 90 percent but it can be done at maximum intensity so change our mindset towards that put in some time and effort into improving the way you breathe through your nose your athletic performance will improve but you'll also get a number of other better uh, health and well-being markers like our heart rate variability improves our stress response improves because we're managing our autonomic nervous system better the nose is the key or the gateway to being able to manage the autonomic nervous system it's integrally linked in with the heart rate and your heartbeat which is hence why it influences uh, heart rate variability you're going to get improvements in sleep as well so it's not just the performance benefits you're going to get you're also going to get some fantastic improvements in your overall health and well-being and that is just as important uh, to me uh, and hopefully it is to you too so thank you for watching i hope this video has been helpful if you have any questions uh, put them in the comments below if you haven't yet subscribed put yeah, put, put it put put a subscribe click the subscribe button um, and then if you uh, want to take a bit of a deeper dive into understanding uh, your breathing better i've got two things for you one is a free better breathing ebook the link will be in the description below for that make sure you check that one out it's completely free available on the website rootedlife.co.uk and if you really want to take a deep dive into it i've got a, um, uh, a full online course where you get to follow along at your own pace it's just 45 pounds covers all the basics of breath work from understanding how to utilize the nose better how to breathe light better how to practice breath holding and how to utilize all of those techniques from the oxygen advantage to improve the way you move feel and perform so if you're interested look at the details in the description below and i'll take you through to the course page on the website and the final thing just say this video came from people asking a lot of questions uh, about this and so uh, ask for some more information on it so um, if you have topics or things that you'd like me to make videos on do let me know um, put them in the comments below um, or you can email me directly davidjacksonfitness at gmail.com i'll put my email in the description as well um, so get in touch if you've got any questions, equally, if you've got things you'd like, topics you'd like to be covered uh, around breathwork and breathing, then I'm more than happy and want to be able to answer those questions and create content that is helpful for you to, uh, so that you can improve your breathing and improve how you feel. So until the next video, keep it nasal.